buddy of mine giving me hell over using a lighter <clears throat> to make a fire the other day. We got a pretty good rain today and kind of show you here that the ground is wet. The leaves are wet. Everything's wet. And uh, set my pack down here in the woods. And we are going to build a fire using the bushcrafty way of rubbing two rocks together to generate heat. No, I'm joking. Uh, give me a few minutes. I'm going to collect a few things and we're going to start a fire. All I'm really doing is I'm going along and bending twigs over. And if they snap... I want them and if they don't snap I don't want them if they snap that means they're not wet anything on the ground right now is going to be wet so I'm actually getting sticks that are sticking up off the ground they've probably had enough time to dry In the afternoon heat, although I am on the south side of a hill, the sun is setting over there. You can kind of see the hillside. You can actually see the sun. I'm on the south side of a hill. I chose the south side specifically because I knew everything was going to be more wet on this side of the hill. And I got to prove to my buddy that I am still the king at starting fires and bushcraft. All right. I'm going to pick this rock up here. It's going to serve as my platform where I'm going to put my dry. The rock weighs a lot more than it looks. Ooh. I'm going to stack my sticks up and twigs right on top of there. Get some more of these branches that are here. Gonna put them there too. I just noticed that it is probably cedar. Well, that's giving me too much of an advantage. Let's go find some more stuff. That's probably cedar. See some stuff here on the ground. That's not cedar. Sounds to be dry. Might be a little damp. We're going to use that too. Just going to lay it right here. Let's see, what else am I going to use? It would be nice if I had some dry leaves, but I don't. Not on this side of the woods. Maybe a little bit here is a little dry. Just the very tops. We'll grab a few of them. It might help us. It actually feels wet in my hand. Now, what you could do with these wet leaves is stick them in your pocket and walk around for an hour or two. Try not to sweat too much. That, your body heat would dry the leaves out. But uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Also, I knew that there wouldn't be really any paper or anything on this side. So uh, let's put our leaves down here. Actually, let's just move these sticks off to the side because I'm going to need that rock anyways. And uh, let me reset this camera back up so you can see what's going on. Get ready to have us some coffee. Yes, I drink coffee. All the time. Don't matter. So I put this rock down because I didn't want to take a chance of starting a fire. on the forest floor. It's 
stove was giving me a little bit of a problem there. Here's my two divots. Let's see. We're going to take our leaves. I actually need a smaller rock, to be honest with you. Do I see another small rock? Um, a tiny rock, something that don't weigh seven million pounds, something that don't have moss on it. I don't see a smaller, I don't see a smaller rock, but what I do have is this little piece of wood that's got one side of it flat. That'll work. We'll lay it right here. I'm going to make sure it's in frame. Yep, you can see it. My secret today. It's going to be this one stick of wood. One stick of wood. not going to use our tinder wick we're going to use that one stick of wood Get my fire kit back in there my bushcraft knife today I'm actually carrying the Mora Garberg uh, I don't, I don't really have a lot of experience with this particular knife. And the fire steel, and you see this long cord? That's because I don't want to lose it like the guy I did on a loon last season. So I'm sticking it sucker right in my pocket for this moment. And I'm going to cut these little trees down out of my way because I need to be on this side. Still recording. Give that a minute. Bring him over here, drop him in. want to get too excited yet but I believe we've got fire be awful hard to put it out now Now the problem becomes keeping it going. I didn't really collect a whole lot of limbs. So my 
fire still back up because I definitely don't want to lose it like that guy on the loon did. And let's start picking up some of this wet wood so it'll start drying out. See all that white smoke? It's from the water evaporating out of this. So I basically just started a fire using wet wood. It's doable, folks. I'm actually going to pause this and I'll bring you back in a minute. My stove is sitting at an angle. I need to get it kind of leveled. Look, my rock broke. Well, we're going to use the rock to prop this up then. Just like that. A little wobbly, but we'll make it work. Need the cup and the water. And my divots put on there yet. And rinse all of the crap out of my cup. Let me go ahead and put my divots on there. Good. Get the cup rinsed out. Using a backpacker washcloth to scrape the inside of my cup. Backpacker washcloth is your fingers. And then water going in. On the stove. Save a little bit of water today since I'm not having dinner out here to help me put the fire out. How about stick some more wet sticks in there? So yeah, my uh, buddy giving me a hard time thinks that every time you're out in the woods you should practice survival skills. Dude, I've like, I started 10,000 fires using a fire steel. I know how, I know how it's done using a ferro rod. <laughs> Just because you might fail, don't mean I will fail. I could literally do this blindfolded. You know, it's wilderness survival has gotten really popular with like bushcrafters and stuff in like the last 10 years. But technically, it's something I've been practicing since I was a kid. You know, when I don't remember how old I was, but uh, we used to go camping at a private park and I slept in a lean to, I had to build myself. didn't matter if it rained or snowed or what <laughs> you had to know how to make do I was pretty young I don't even know if I was a teenager yet or not oh 
Oh, look, I can't take a uh, Instagram photo. Let me uh, shut the camera off and take an Instagram photo. Getting ready to make my coffee. Hopefully, you can see it. Don't even have, once again, don't even have my coffee opened up yet. Notice that my cell phone battery is about dead. Man, what kind of a survivalist am I? What kind of a survivalist am I, he said. Well, if you were stuck out in the woods and you had your choice of people to be stuck in the woods with, I'd probably be a pretty good choice. At least whatever you eat is not going to make you sick, not going to kill you. And I know things that many people don't, like how to make coffee in the woods. because I'm too lazy to get my spoon out we're going to improvise how we are going to stir up coffee in the woods using a secret stick nom 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 so in the last video someone asked me why I use this bush box stove instead of the fire ring and the reason being is because when you start a fire on the ground there are roots and things in the dirt that catch fire and those can burn underground that's how probably almost all of the forest fires get started at places like Red River Gorge is people don't correctly put out their campfires and that starts fires another reason why i prefer to use these small wood stoves is i like to be very discreet when i'm out in the woods i don't want other people to know that i'm there and uh they don't really create a lot of smoke as long as you're not using wet wood like i did today that was more an example of yes it can be done you can start a fire using wet wood with nothing more than a ferro rod and some fat wood. I'm really kind of in this mentality where, you know, I like solitude. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to bother other people. And uh, so I like to keep everything small and compact and light. And then that makes me fast and nimble in the woods. You're just out enjoying the peace and quiet. Listen to how quiet it is. <laughs> 